first squirrel hunt definitely was uh, one that I wasn't ready for and didn't have any appreciation for because I just thought going out squirreling, you just you pick up your gun, you walk out the door, you walk through some trees and you find a squirrel just like you do whenever you walk through a park in Houston. And so this was totally different. Part of what I love about it too is like you go from what you're doing, like the activity you're doing changes so drastically, like you're just kind of strolling through the woods, going on a hike, and then all of a sudden you hear that dog, and then so you, you go from just walking and looking at nature and seeing what the wildlife is, and then, then you're hunting. You know, it's that anticipation that builds whenever you're, whenever you're getting up, uh, getting up to the area, and whenever the, the truck parks, I think, I think I'm just about as excited as as the dog is, just because it's, it's time to get out, and walk around, and see if we can find some squirrels. Try to get out before the sun comes out. They wake up fairly early, so the morning is a good time to get them. We're usually going down to like a creek or a low spot, somewhere where there's water, somewhere we think the squirrels are gonna congregate. The dog is the one that is finding the squirrels. Uh, she puts her nose to the ground, she's smelling for squirrels, and it seems that like when there's squirrels out and about, she takes off running around any direction. I mean, 360 degrees, you're canvassing as much of the woods as you can. So when she smells a squirrel, she'll bark. And you can kind of tell from the bark, like if she's extra excited. You start to get to know whether, whenever she's on a hot trail or if it's, and there's, she can actually see a squirrel or if, if it's just a good scent and she can tell there's a squirrel there. We'll be, we'll be hiking along. Uh, we hear Minnow, she barks at a tree. Um, we run up, we get there, and usually what we'll do is try to keep at least one pair of eyes on the tree. And the, the main reason for that is if you're both moving at the same time, no one's looking at the tree. If the squirrel is 30, 40 yards in the air, jumping from tree to tree, you could easily lose that squirrel, especially in those first moments after you get to the tree. Um, so then from that point, like this is another really exciting part of the hunt because you get there and you just you don't know where the squirrel is. They could be, it could be the type of squirrel that's going to sit still and just try to hide. Uh, it could be that it decides I'm going to run, like I'm going to go for it. So you really, you never know. One of the biggest things in knowing how we worked as a team with, with Minnow, being able to find him and keeping an eye out and how we would spread the tree and look for the squirrel and pretty much came down to whoever had the shot, took the shot. So with, with all of our squirrels, we were, we were cleaning them in the field and throwing them in the game bag, using the old, uh, I guess, the pants and jacket method, the putting the tail under the boot and cleaning them in the field out there because it, it certainly got everything cooled down quicker. It was a prudent thing to do, and that allowed us to kind of get them aired out, and cleaned out, and uh, thrown into the game bag. The dog is just on, it's on the same wavelength. Like You're communicating with it not in the same language or whatever, but the dog knows what you're doing and you know what the dog is doing. When I hear that bark, I know like it's time, it's time to go get food. Like we need to go catch this thing, however you're gonna catch it. I, I love that aspect of it, like super exciting. I don't, I don't know, I, just, I think that it's, it's so cool.